No running at the pool! Hey guys, this is Danny McFly with a new tutorial. Have you ever wondered how to apply a design or logo to a shirt or any sort of surface? Well, in this tutorial we will learn how to do it. So let's go! So today I'm gonna teach you how to use the power of 3D printing to make a stencil that you can apply to any sort of surface, be it fabric, plastic or anything else. We're gonna go into depth on how to design it in a vector program, how to make it into a 3D model and then how to apply it onto the surface. So let's start out with designing. Alright, so we first need our image that we want to trace. I'm using Illustrator here because I'm very used to Illustrator and I usually work with it. But I will also show you a quick way of doing it in a Fusion 360 later as well. I just don't use it because I think it's more complex. So first we just drag in our, our picture that we want. So let's go over here. I have my file already here. So I just pull it in. So this is going to be my base layer, what, what I'm going to draw out. So I'm going to lock this layer and I'm going to make a new layer. And as you can see, this is a pretty simple, straightforward design. Just going to start out with a circle in the center here. And if you press Alt and Shift, it will draw the circle from where you started it out. And we don't want it to be filled, so we're going to remove the fill here. But stroke, the stroke is fine. So we're not 100% on point here, but we're gonna just use the arrow tool here and just scale it up by pressing shift. It scales it uniformly. And there we have it. We just need to move it a little bit upwards. So yeah, that's pretty much centered. Now we have the center point already, so now it's pretty simple. We go back to the center and it should automatically align with the center point if you get close to it. Just click it, press Alt and Shift, and then it will scale it perfectly here. And there we go. And we have another one here. One, two, three, four. And one more for the inner part. And we already have our circles. So this was an easy part. Now we also have those rounded squares. So we have one that goes all the way across here, and then we have two here. So you can just use the rounded rectangle tool here and start out here and just go over as you can see the rounded edges are a little bit too rounded so we're gonna go back which is Control z if you just click anywhere with the rounded rectangle tool selected it comes up with this and you just go down with the corner radius and i go to five and now now the corner is set to five and just start over again and that looks better and again, we need to align it a little bit. So I'm going to use the arrow tool here and move this line up a little bit. So it's on center and this one up here as well. So now we have a pretty good square for this. So next up, we have another one of those. But you can see like these corners here have a much smaller radius. So same thing again, just switch to, let's say two, po two millimeters radius and then just drag it out from the center. And there you have it. So at this point I just turn off the visibility on the background because I want to cut those lines. And it's much easier for me to do it like this. We now have this big part and what we want to do is we want to make this all one piece. So what I'm going to do is I select the scissors tool here. If you can't find it, it's usually under the eraser tool. I control click the line I want to cut and then I cut it where it says intersect. And now you have a cut there. And if I do the same thing on the other side, you can see it cuts the, that line out. And now I can just press delete and that line is gone. And I'm going to do that all the way around with the intersect tool. So let's just fast forward. Okay, so we cut our first basic pieces out. And one important thing here, Fusion 360 will not recognize this open point. So we, what we have to do is we're going to select this second pen tool here and we're going to select those two edges, right click and press join. So just connect all the pieces and do that all around until you only have separate pieces. And now let's just fast forward while I do this in time lapse. All right, we have our 
basic shape here. We have a couple of more shapes that we need to do obviously. Let's get started with those rounded curves because those are a bit more difficult. So let's do this real quick. So for these rounded curves what I do is I just start a new layer and then I just start a path here. I'm gonna lock the old layer. Actually just doing straight paths here like this. And as you can see, this is obviously nowhere close yet, but we're going to add another point here. And once we press control, we can move the point. And once we press alt and mouse over, we can round it out. So you can see now we have one point here. We're going to add another one here. And now we're going to round this out some more, a little less here. And there you have the first curve and the same thing on the other side. And there we have it. We have this part ready and before we connect it to the other piece we want it to be on all four edges so we're gonna just pick the first arrow here again select it press ctrl c for copy and then to put it exactly where it is right now we press ctrl f because it places it on top of it and now what we can do is we can transform it and we can reflect it either horizontal or vertical and then clicking it and pressing shift we can move it over straight so align it here again so now we have both those we're gonna go again we select both of them press ctrl c ctrl f and then instead of vertical we reflect it horizontal and then we just click and press shift and just move it downwards so now again with the same technique as before we have them connected here so let's unlock this layer again Let's select this layer and just cut it again. And there we have it. I'm just gonna skip over these pieces because it's literally the same steps again. We just made a rounded rectangle here and we're just gonna make a regular rectangle at 45 degree angle all the way here. So we're gonna switch to the finished piece before we do the font. So we have our outlines here. All we need now is the font. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press T here and just type lifeguard. And next up we're gonna go back to the arrow up again and just gonna scale it up first. So going back to the font, I'm gonna select it and we can try out different fonts here. All right, so I found this font, which is close enough for now. Uh, and first, what we're going to do is we need to get this as close as possible. So I scaled it to the right size already, but now I can't edit this because it's still a font. So what I'm going to do is go right click and go create outline. So now it's an object. If I click it, it will always select the whole thing. And that is because it's grouped. And what we need to do now is ungroup it. And now I can edit every single piece here separately. And if I take the second arrow here, I can just select my points and just move them around. So I adjusted the font so they fit perfectly over the sketch. And as you can see, this is as close as we're gonna get. And one more thing we need to do is we need to create an outside box for this. So we're just gonna go over here. It's gonna create a rectangle tool and make a rectangle all the way around. So what we're going to do now is we're going to save this and import it into Fusion 360. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file and save as. Fusion 360 requires me to have an SVG file. So I save it as an SVG file and we're just going to save it and then we're going to import it into Fusion 360. All right, we are now in Fusion 360. And before I import the file from the Illustrator we just did, I just want to show you a really quick alternative to doing it directly in here. If you don't have Illustrator, don't want to use it, you can go in here and go insert and then you just use this. As you can see, it places a sketch so you can draw after it. So you just insert that file from your computer and you can just insert the same picture right here. Select where you want to where you want to put it. So I'm going to put it here and I'm going to position it real quick. And so you have your background and now what you can do is start a sketch here on the same surface. And now you can basically do the same things you did before. So for example, I want to do this line here and you can just go around the whole thing and it will adjust accordingly. So we're going here and then we're gonna move down as well. 
And as you can see, I'm not doing the rounded angles right now. That is because I can do that afterwards. And I'm just gonna go press escape. And as you see here, I have right angles here, but I can also just round it out. And just click this edge and just round it until I'm happy. And as you can see, you can go around the whole piece like this and just trace it the same way. But for me, it's easier to do in Illustrator. So we're just gonna import the Illustrator file now. Okay, so let's go back to insert and we need to insert the SVG file and locate it on our computer. So we have our Hawkins logo already that we made earlier and it will insert it now. Now we can move it and position it. Now very important thing with Fusion 360 and Illustrator is it's not the same scale once you import it. So if you import it one to one in the scale it will be smaller because Fusion 360 has a different measuring unit and it scales it by one third smaller. So an easy way to fix it is just go by 1.33 periodically and then you will scale it to the right size. And there we have it. And now we just finish our sketch and now we can work with it. So what we want to do is we want to select all the pieces we want to extrude. And as you can see, if I just click on one piece here, it will always select one piece, but we want to extrude them all at the same time. So what I'm doing is I'm pressing shift and then you can select multiple pieces. And we have our piece that we want to extrude selected. So we're just going to select this command here and we're going to make it two millimeters thick. And that's basically it. But you can see those are all still separate pieces. So we need to bridge them somehow. And the way I do this is I go in here and I just go to create and make a cube. I select where I want that cube. I select this surface and then you get like these crosshairs and you just put a cube here and make it maybe four by five millimeters. And then I move it up to about 10 millimeters. And then you have the first part of your bridge. And we're just gonna repeat, repeat that step. And then one more try here for the final connecting piece. We can just extend it here and you will see it will turn red suddenly. That's because it wants to cut out this piece and make a hole here. It's pretty easy to fix. Just go to connect here instead. And then you will have a finished bridge and you will have your two parts connected. What I do now is I round out these pieces for a simple reason. We want as little edges as possible so that our paint doesn't get stuck on edges that we don't want to paint. So we're gonna take these edges here and just round them out with this simple tool, which is this one here. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing at the top. So we now have our nice rounded piece and we just repeat the same thing for all the other pieces. So we need to connect all those pieces together and I'm gonna show you what the finished piece will look like. And there you have it. The final piece connected all the separate parts and rounded out all the edges that it would let me. So now we are ready to print this. So how, we, how do we get this to 3D printing? Pretty simple. We just open up the object here, right click the, uh, the object and save as STL. Keep the standard settings and go to OK. And then you can just save it as whatever you like. And then we can import it into our printing software. So let's go there. All right, I opened up my Cura software. I use Cura because it's free. Just go to your file, find your file, we import this, and then you just basically select it, lay it flat on this surface. So I'm just gonna go save it and then send it to my 3D printer to start printing. So we have our 3D printed stencil and we already have the shirt that we want to transfer this to. First of all, what I did is I put some cardboard in here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position this here where I want it and I'm gonna tape this down. And I just used regular painter's tape here for this. Now, once we got this in position, we can get the rest of the fabric out of the way as good as we can. And that's what the cardboard is for. So I'm just going to pick this up here. 
and lift as much of the material under the under the cardboard as I can. Now we have our shirt completely packed. The next step is optional depending on if you want to do this inside or outside. What I'm gonna do is since I'm gonna paint this in front of the camera here is I'm gonna make a bounding box around this whole piece. This way I can spray here and don't have a lot of fall off on the outside. So I got my cardboard pieces that I'm gonna build a box around this whole, whole pattern here. And since this is pretty simple I'm just gonna fast forward so let's do this. And there you have it, we build our box and now we're gonna get to the fun part. So for this part we're gonna need some spray paint and some gloves. I prefer using spray paint but obviously you can use any other aerosol paint like an airbrush. You can use any other paint you prefer. The gloves though are very important because we have those floating pieces in here that we connected with these bridges and to prevent any sort of creeping of the paint we're gonna press the bridges down so that way we can prevent the creep of the paint. Also very important here the first coat has to be a very light coat and there's a reason for this. We want the paint to be on top of the fabric and only soak into the fabric slightly so it doesn't creep out into the fabric. So first coat is just gonna be a light dust coat so we have the paint on top of the fabric but not fully soaked in. So let's do this real quick and as you can see I'm starting up here in the corner and I'm gonna shake my cam. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lightly press this down and lightly go over like this and get into all of the corners very slightly and be very careful to not spray too much. And you're gonna have to rotate this and move it around so you can get into all the nooks and crannies of the model. And also try to keep your spray paint can upright. That way you have a cleaner spray. Because if you hold it top set down or flat, eventually you're not gonna get any more paint out of it. Alright, so we have our very first coat and now we just wait for this to dry. The first coat is mostly dry, as you can see if I touch it there's no paint coming off. Uh, and that means we can go for the second coat. Do this as many times as you want until you see the results that you're going for. So what I'm doing is I'm just checking if I can see any more of the white spots. But other than that, I'm pretty much done. So we are ready to take off the whole piece and see what we get afterwards. And there we go. That looks actually pretty awesome. So let's get multiple cameras in here so you can see here. I have a little bit of overspray but that's just because I did it quickly and this is just a test piece. But as you can see it's good enough for cosplay and I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I'm gonna go put this on and I can show you what it looks like in person. And there you have it, the finished result. I did it on the shirt and I also did it on my, my shorts here for the costume. It didn't take me really a long time to make this. It took me a few minutes overall. The design took longer than the application. As you can see, it looks pretty awesome. I'm gonna, gonna get closer to the camera so you can see the detail.
and I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. One thing to note is if I do this again I will wrap the back side of the shirt or the fabric up with any sort of paper or tape as well because the spray paint has some sort of dust to it when you spray it that attaches to the fabric. It doesn't go into the fabric so you can still remove it with a lint roller or with washing it but it's still annoying and it can still leave stains so next time I'm gonna protect the whole fabric and just leave the front part open where I'm gonna spray paint the, the logo on. I hope you like this tutorial, I hope it helps you in your future projects. Tell me down below what you think of it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next tutorial. Bye! Zoom. Zoom. Zoom.